Tonight, DARPA studies how to use social media for propaganda and deception, it's getting tougher for patent trolls, and plans the former CEO of Mozilla had for Firefox to take on Chrome. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 125 for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Let's get right to the tech feed. The Guardian reports that papers leaked by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden indicate U.S. and British intelligence agencies have been researching the covert use of social media for purposes of propaganda and deception. The U.S. Department of Defense spent millions learning how to influence and spread messages using social media. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, monitored Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Kickstarter, and even celebrities like Lady Gaga and Justin Bieber. These studies not only looked into what users were communicating, but they apparently messaged unwitting participants in order to track and study how they would respond. One paper that studied how to spread messages over social media was entitled, Who Will Retweet This? One researcher stated our work aims to identify and engage the right people at the right time in social media to help propagate information when needed. DARPA was always in also inter interested in developing ways to discredit the agency's enemies with false information spread online. Perhaps still stinging over criticism that it placed former cable lobbyist Tom Wheeler in charge of the agency that was regulating cable industries, the Obama administration has decided not to appoint pharmaceutical executive Phil Johnson to the top job in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Johnson, who had been an attorney, attorney for Johnson & Johnson, made a name for himself by publicly scorning attempts to reform the patent system which was an interesting choice for an administration that had been promising patent reform. In another win for patent reform, a coalition of companies, including Google, Canon, SAP, Newegg, Dropbox, and Asana, have joined a patent war treaty concerning the 300,000 patent assets between them. This is not a cross-licensing agreement, but a license on transfer network. In the event that any of the companies in the treaty decide to sell their patents, they agree to grant all the other companies in the network a durable license for that patent. The end result is that the patents in the treaty will give innovators protection and monetary control of their IP while simultaneously making that IP useless to non-practicing entities, also known as patent trolls. LG's new smartwatch went on sale yesterday and now they have a wearable for the kiddos, the Kiz on wristband. The watch uses GPS and Wi-Fi so parents can track the location of their children in real time with a smartphone or tablet. Another feature lets parents call the wearable, and if the call isn't answered within 10 seconds, the Kiz on will turn on an integrated microphone and let the parents listen to what's happening near the watch. The child can also dial a pre-configured phone number if they need to speak to an adult. To make the wearable more attractive to kids, LG is selling the watch in blue, pink, and green, as well as offering accessories that include the likeness of popular anime characters. It goes on sale in South Korea tomorrow, and in North America and Europe in the third quarter of this year. If you're one of the many who long for faster internet speeds, and who among us doesn't, but have no hope of Google Fiber landing near your home, rejoice, your salvation may be at hand. Kinda. Bell Labs has announced that they were able to deliver a sustained 10 gigabits per second over copper wires with their newly developed tech, dubbed XG Fast. The new standard allows the use of 500 megahertz of frequency over a copper pair compared to 17 to 30 megahertz of the previous technologies. That massive increase of usable frequency translates into a massive boost in throughput, though the maximum length is limited because of the crosstalk and interference inherent at those frequencies, Pairing this tech wool with fiber to the cabinet could allow the delivery of one gigabit per second symmetrical connections over existing copper lines to the home. Coming up, the FAA investigates whether you can fly drones into fireworks displays. Up next, I'll talk with Brad Charkis from PC World about the plans former Mozilla CEO had to transform Firefox into an anti-Chrome browser. But first... 
Today, I want to share with you a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401ks, bank accounts, etc., all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it for you, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all of your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, your phone, or your tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. This week, Personal Capital announced the integration of its award-winning app with Android Wear, available for download in Google Play. The Watch app seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances wherever and whenever they're needed. It shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to set up your free account today. Go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. You must go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us tonight is Brad Charkis, senior writer at PC World. Brad, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, I appreciate you having me. Now, today there was an article entitled, Former Mozilla CEO Would Have Transformed Firefox into a Pro-Privacy Anti-Chrome. Now, Firefox has had a tough time recently with the Chrome browser, taking a lot, if not most, of their market share. Can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about Brendan's uh, plans? Yeah, so uh, if you don't remember, uh, Brendan Eich was uh, named CEO of Mozilla earlier this year. Mozilla is the company that makes Firefox. And uh, he had to resign after just a couple of weeks because there was some fierce backlash over uh, some uh, political contributions he made in 2008. So this weekend, he was uh, tweeting what he would have done if he was still the Mozilla CEO. So they're actually pretty interesting insights into what, you know, what could have been for Firefox. Um, first up, he actually would have... Uh, become more like Chrome in that he would have accelerated the development of uh, Firefox electrolysis, which is a uh, new technology to split up the way Firefox handles content. Right now, it's all one big Firefox process. But uh, Chrome, for example, they split up to numerous smaller pro uh, processes so that, uh, one, it improves performance. So if, you know, a tab is hanging, something bad's going on, it doesn't slow down the entire browser, just that tab. Um, which is, you know, a common complaint with Firefox. It also improves uh, security. It could bring the sandbox feature that is, you know, such a selling point for Chrome to Firefox if that gets pushed. The downside to that is it would break uh, compatibility with a bunch of the add-ons that, you know, Firefox has been the selling point of Firefox ever since it was created years and years ago. Hey, we have add-ons, and a bunch of those would break. Um, but more importantly... He said he would have pushed hard to differentiate, differentiate the browser against Google and Google Chrome in every way possible, every way that Google can't because of its business model, starting, of course, with privacy. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that insight and that differentiation that he wanted. Of course, he wanted to copy a few things, a few of the innovations that Chrome came out with. But what do you say was what he saw as the biggest problem with Chrome that he wanted Firefox to address? Um, I'm not sure if it's so much a problem as point of differenti differentiation. Um, Google and Mozilla come from two very different viewpoints. Mozilla, its whole thing is building an open web. You know, you get your browser going, it'll work the exact same anywhere. Uh, Google is, they also push open web endeavors, but, you know, they're a for-profit company that's trying to make money, and a lot of that comes from advertising and privacy. And while... Google does a decent job of, uh, you know, enabling privacy features in Chrome. Um, they could do a lot of things better. Uh, and that's where Ike sounds like he would have pushed with uh, Firefox, you know, uh, enabling better control over what kind of ad you're seeing. So you know what kind of ad you're getting, you know who's tracking you, you know who's so on and so forth, as well as, you know, who knows, different tools. It's all what could have been. Right. Now, here's the big question. Firefox relied on Google for income. 
So how was he planning on making it more Google unfriendly, more differentiated from Chrome without destroying their revenue? Well, yeah, that is a big problem because uh, Mozilla Corporation, Mozilla Foundation, uh, pardon me, it uh, 90 percent of its revenue comes from Google and various, you know, agreements they have as far as Google's placement in Firefox. Um, earlier this year, they actually or late last year, I believe they started toying around with uh, an idea to diversify the revenue stream by in the new tab like uh, the new tab, when you open a new tab in Firefox, um, there's a bunch of boxes that appear there of your recent history. One way they were thinking of making more money is uh, by placing some ads there for new users who don't have recent history yet. Uh, there is some backlash there as well from the Firefox community, so they're proceeding pretty cautiously, but uh, following the conversation that Ike was having on Twitter, he thinks that was an, a key way that Mozilla could have uh, established more revenue independency by... Uh, Doing that while in a way that still allows user control and awareness of what ads they're getting and why they're getting them and give them the options to turn it off. So it sounds like Brendan actually had some, some really good points about innovation that should take place at Mozilla. But what will happen to this now that he's no longer there? I mean, who knows? This is uh, the guy who was the CEO for two weeks saying this is what I would have done. But on the other hand, he was a co-founder of the Mozilla Foundation and the Mozilla Project before that, and he was their CTO for years and years and years. So, I mean, his words carry some weight, and he's obviously been thinking about this for a while. We have no idea what's going to come, but, I mean... <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It could be an exciting time. Or Mozilla. Thanks, Brad. We yeah. appreciate your time with Tech News Tonight. That's Brad Charkis, senior writer at PC World. Now... Finally, you've probably seen this video of a drone inside a fireworks display. It really is amazing. It's beautiful stuff. And we here at TN2 love ourselves some great drone footage. Well, the FAA is not convinced that this is legal. In a statement to Forbes, the FAA says they're looking into multiple incidents in which unmanned aircraft flew into fireworks displays to determine if there were any violation of federal regulations or airspace restrictions. The key sticking point could be who is in charge of the fireworks and the location of the display. Firework operators must set up a safe zone around the launch area. The question is how far these areas extend and whether they apply to drones. As you probably know, the FAA is working on their drone regulations and how they have yet another caveat to consider its drones and fireworks. Blech. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning show program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Fallis here. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.